good morning friends today we will be continuing with water issues but uh, in yesterday's class we had done with we, 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 in yesterday's booklet we had covered most of the things but some updates on air pollution and some updates on biodiversity were pending so let us first do that before we jump on to water issues second booklet now for those of you who are watching this is the first video please don't do this go to the previous video this is a continuation of the previous video this is a continuation of the uh, yesterday's topics that we were covering so yesterday we we had started talking about ammonia pollution and we had briefly discussed the three news why uh, this particular issue was there okay so now let us understand what is ammonia ammonia perhaps all of us who have studied till class 10 science till class 10 know that it is a gas which is also known as NH3 whose uh, formula is NH3. Now this gas though is colorless but has a particularly pungent smell. This pungent smell uh, is something that you can get from cat urine or urine is something that gives you that pungent smell which is similar to that of uh, NH3. This pungent smell would also be found in uh, house cleaning liquids that we use. Sometimes they consist of ammonia. Ammonia is also found in uh, those things like when you have to clean the mirror. So the uh, liquid that comes for cleaning of the mirror that consists of ammonia. The ammonia or the smell of ammonia is something that we regularly or uh, we somehow tend to smell at one place or the other. Now, ammonia is present in nature. It's naturally produced. This we have said in urine or cat urine or in the whole nitrogen cycle, ammonia is there in very small quantity. But the problem occurs because of man-made sources when ammonia is available in large quantities. When ammonia is, we are, we are studying it in air pollution, so when ammonia, they say in nature, it is available. When we are breathing in, some small amount of ammonia is available. But when this concentration becomes large, it becomes problematic. Why would it become problematic? Because in large quantity, ammonia can be harmful. So, it is found in nature, it is manufactured also in industries. Why is it manufactured? What are the key areas where ammonia is used. So, almost 80 to 90 percent of ammonia in the whole world is used for making fertilizers. Ammonium nitrate is one of the fertilizers that we use to supply nitrogen to our uh, land and most of the ammonia is used for that. Then there are other applications, for example, uh, other nitrogen compounds. Most of the nitrogen compounds which are used in industries are derived from ammonia only. So, there ammonia is used. It can also be used for making household cleaners as I was telling you about that. Plastics, dyes, pharmaceuticals in pharmaceutical industry it is also used. It is an antiseptic and thus can also be used as food preservatives. In fact, scientists are also experimenting with using ammonia for the storage of renewable energy. You must be knowing that uh, storage of renewable energy is a challenge. Now, sometimes sun produces a lot of energy our uh, photovoltaic cells are able to generate a lot of energy but when the energy is not being used then and there it's wasted so what is important is we develop a storage mechanism now how would ammonia play a role in uh, storing that energy what what scientists are trying to do is they're trying to use the naturally occurring compounds to make ammonia using the energy so, renewable energy that is getting produced, what they are doing is renewable energy that is getting produced. They want to store it, right? Renewable energy. So, what they will do is using this renewable energy, they will using nitrogen and other compounds form ammonia. Now, Ammonia needed this energy to be formed and when you have to use this energy, in future 
this ammonia would be used in fuel cell as fuel. In fuel cell, this ammonia will be reconverted into the compounds from which it was formed, but in the process would release energy. Here, it took energy and thus stored it. In future, in, in the fuel cell, it will release energy. We have already studied about fuel cell in the science and technology section, so you must be aware of. So, let us not divert ourselves a lot in it, but you must understand that ammonia is also being used for storing energy. So, there are lots of application of ammonia and thus ammonia is being used in different sectors. But our focus in this class is on ammonia pollution. We are not studying chemical engineering or we are not studying chemistry that ammonia ka application kya hai that is something that we are worried about. We are more worried about why is ammonia becoming a pollutant. So, in small quantities it is available in nature, we breathe in also, it is not a big deal, but at high concentrations, ammonia is harmful, ammonia is dangerous. You would see it is uh, toxic, it is caustic, it is hazardous. In fact, when we breathe in ammonia, large quantity of it, it affects our skin, eyes, throats, lungs and may cause coughing or burns also. When people die, people who are recently in an ammonia accident from a fertilizer company in Allahabad or Prayagraj, ammonia leakage took place. So, there people, two people died because of breathing in ammonia. It, it was because they were not able to get oxygen when they breathed in ammonia. Then there are some long term health concerns also which develops. So, this is health impact of ammonia. You can understand that a large quantity of ammonia or la a larger percentage of ammonia in air would be harmful for us. Second is environmental impact. Now, environmental impact of ammonia, as I say, ammonia or ammonium nitrate, which is a, a product of uh, made from ammonia, is a fertilizer. But when it is available in large quantity and when it, when it gets into our water bodies, it provides the nutrients which are required for eutrophication. Yesterday we had understood eutrophication. Eutrophication was a lot of trophic activities happening meaning a lot of algae getting formed which prevent sunlight from entering the water body eventually leading to uh, deoxygenation leading to uh, uh, ending of photosynthesis leading to eventually problem for the water body. Then soil acidification, ammonia nitrogen compounds getting into the water bodies uh, getting into the soil nitric acid vagara form ho sakta hai, that problem then eventually biodiversity loss. So, these are these are different ways in which ammonia can impact environment. So, a pollutant will harm our health negatively, it may impact environment negatively, then air pollution bhi cause kar sakta hai. Now, uh, most of the airborne ammonia is coming from fertilizers. How? Fertilizers which we Put it in so, put in soil. Some of it vaporizes and gets into the air, and therefore we will see that in India, the one of the hot spots for atmospheric ammonia is the Indo-Gangetic plain. In the Indo-Gangetic plain, we are using a lot of fertilizers, and thus vaporized fertilizers would get into atmosphere and would cause air pollution. Then, other than ammonia itself being a pollutant. It can also combine with things like volatile uh, organic carbons NOx or SO2 to form PM2.5. We have already studied about PM2.5. PM2.5 is one of the most dangerous pollutant. So, ammonia can combine with these to form PM2.5. Now, we have seen what ammonia is. We have seen what its applications are, we have seen how it is acting as pollutant. In general, ammonia acts as pollutant, environment, uh, it negatively impacts our health, it negatively impacts our uh, environment, then it may create some other pollutant. So, it can itself be a pollutant by getting into the air, but it may create PM2.5 also, ammonia ke problems. Now, uh, please note one thing, ammonia is part of that nitrogen cycle. 
So it is not something that will stay in air for long. And thus, it does not, uh, uh, and because, because it is so dynamic, it is part of that uh, cycle, ammonia does not bioaccumulate. It is a, a, it's a uh, for, uh, pollutant which will not bioaccumulate. I hope you understand the meaning of bioaccumulate. We had uh, done it yesterday, bioaccumulation of certain things we were, we were talking about. For example, uh, mercury pollution is something that we will study today that also bioaccumulates. Okay. So, Ammonia se related basic season ho gayi. Now, come to a news which was there in December 2020. There was a study by IIT Khadakpur. Indo and it, uh, what was the study about? The study was about ammonia over, atmospheric ammonia over India, spatial and temporal analysis. Like time wise throughout the year, how does, how is ammonia varying throughout the country? Atmospheric ammonia. Please note, here they are not considering soil ammonia or ammonia in the water. Ammonia in the air. So, this study is about how atmospheric ammonia is varying in India, spatially, spatially means geographically, in different parts of the country, how it is and temporally. Uh, 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 temporally, matlab, kis season mein jada ammonia hoga, kis season mein kam ammonia hoga, that is something that they are talking about here. Okay, now, first thing that this says, the general trend of atmospheric ammonia in India is negative. That's good. General trend, if you look at the whole country on an average, uh, throughout the year on an average, the general trend is negative. That is, atmospheric ammonia is reducing. Whereas in countries like USA, China and the European continent, the ammonia is going up, whereas in India it is going down, that is a good sign, that is a positive sign. But when we look at the month from June to August, monsoon season, where a lot of fertilizers would be used, ammonia, atmospheric ammonia is rising at a rate of 0.08% annually. So, dekho, hum kya bol rahe? the study has done both temporal and spatial, spatial analysis. So, time wise also it is saying that overall in the country it is going down, but when we are covering June to August period, in June to August period it is actually going up, you can understand the reason because a lot of fertilizers would be used then. Then they say that Indo-Gangetic plain is one of the hot spot for atmospheric ammonia, Indo-Gangetic plains, Indus, Ganga or Unke beech ka Punjab, Haryana, all those things would also come here. Western Uttar Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh would be coming there. These are the regions which use a lot of fertilizers. So, they are the one of the hotspots for atmospheric ammonia. Why? Because they have intense agri activities and they use a lot of fertilizers. Then, they also have certain other findings. One is, atmospheric ammonia have positive correlation. Positive correlation matlab, if these conditions improve, atmospheric ammonia also improve. With the increase in these conditions, atmospheric ammonia also enhances. So, it has positive correlation with fertilizer use. The more fertilizer would be used, more the atmospheric ammonia would be there. Hot weather. As I was saying, uh, the fertilizers are volatile in nature. So, with high temperature, they some of them would, some of it would become fume and would get into the air. And thus, with these two conditions, uh, fertilizer use, hot weather and fires also. Aag lag jayegi kheto mein ya kahin bhi, more the cases of fires are there, more ammonia is in the air. So, with these things, it has positive correlation, but it has negative correlation with total precipitation. If the rainfall is lot, in that situation, the atmospheric ammonia will get, with rain it will get deposited in the ground. So, overall ammonia would in the environment would be more, but in the air it would not remain. So, ammonia has negative correlation with total precipitation. So, this was first of its kind of study which understood how ammonia is distributed in the atmosphere, as, as, uh, in the atmosphere over India. Temporally as well as 
specially. So we do not have to study this in a lot of detail, this report in a lot of detail. But jo teen char points hain yahan pe, we should have an idea about, and your common sense will also help you uh, understand these things. Now. Another reason because of which ammonia was in news was the IFCO gas leak. IFCO is Indian Farmers Fertilizers Cooperative Limited. Its unit, one of its unit is in Prayagraj. Vahape, the leak of ammonia gas had taken place which had killed two people and a lot of other people were injured. So recently January 2021, in December this accident took place in January 2021, a five member committee was also formed by NZT to look into why this happened. But this is an example, ki it's a pollutant. People were exposed to ammonia, they, they didn't die because of explosion and all. They died because they breathed in, they breathed ammonia. Fine. So for this reason, it was in news, not very important, but this will help you understand that ammonia is a pollutant and breathing in a lot of it can be problematic. Then water pollution. So far we have talked about air pollution, atmospheric ammonia and all, but ammonia in water can also be a pollutant. Ammonia water pollution is also a concern. Now, according to Bureau of Indian Standards, in drinking water, we can have up to 0 0.5 ppm parts per million of ammonia. So, some amount of ammonia in water is okay, will not harm us, like that of air. Some amount of ammonia in air was okay, a very small amount of ammonia in air was okay, but it became problematic when there was more of it. In the same way, if in water, Ammonia becomes more than 1 ppm, 1 parts per million. It will be harmful for our health, it will be harmful for fish population. So it's not only that we will not be able to drink that water, that water would be would not be suitable for us, it is also the fact that it will impact this thing negatively, uh, fish population biodiversity negatively. Now, in Delhi, in Yamuna River, high concentration of ammonia has been disrupting the water supply. For example, in July 2020, ammonia in Yamuna had reached 3 ppm. What is the acceptable limit? 5 ppm, uh, 0 0.5 ppm. It had reached 3 ppm. Now, Delhi Jal Board does not have a technology which can treat water which has ammonia of up to 3 ppm. It, it can treat ammonia up to 0 0.9 ppm. But if it goes beyond 0 0.9 ppm, Delhi Jal Board cannot treat that water. Now in this situation, what happens? In this situation, they have to stop using that. And thus the water supply in Delhi gets destroyed. Please note, once the Yamuna, once the water enters Delhi, Yamuna River enters Delhi, you won't be able to use it. So, just before it enters Delhi, there is a barrage from where we take the water for Delhi. Now, the problem comes. If a lot of pollutant in Haryana gets added into Yamuna River, in that situation, what would happen? Ammonia would be high, they won't be able to use it. So it happened in July, it happened in November, it is happening this year also that ammonia, high concentration of ammonia is creating problems. But in exam, dekho, all these things are stories to help you understand things. Oh, what you had to uh, carefully note was 0 0.5 ppm is okay. Beyond that is harmful. This Yamuna story, 3 ppm, was just to help you remember things. Ke haan, 3 ppm tak chala gaya, water will not be usable. So these stories, like we could have just talked about the fact that water ammonia 0.5 ppm tak hona chahiye. But remembering it would be difficult. When you hear this context ki uh, Yamuna mein when it went to 3 ppm, it would be easier for you to remember. Okay, then why the ammonia population uh, pol uh, pollution is so high in, or why does it become so high? Sometimes there are industrial units in Sonipat and then there are other drains which join the river along the way. 
they may be contributing higher ammonia pollution there. So, what should be done in this situation? Like, how do we deal with ammonia pollution? One suggestion that is given is precision agriculture. We know about precision agriculture while studying agriculture, we had understood what precision agriculture was. Precision agriculture may we use inputs precisely. Jitna nitrogen chahiye soil ko, utna hi use karenge. Jitna pani chahiye, uh, the amount of water, the amount of nitrogen that we'll use in the soil would be precisely equal to what is required. Amount of uh, water that we'll use will also be precisely equal to what is required. So, unnecessary amount of fertilizer when it will not get into the soil, it will not get washed off into the water. It will not get vaporized and get into the air. And this will reduce the ammonia uh, pollution. Then regulation of discharge. These industrial units are able to emit, discharge their waste into the Yamuna river which is causing a problem. So, handling industrial discharge effectively can also play a role in fighting ammonia population. Then reducing nitrogen feed to animals. Animals are a big source of ammonia pollution. The animal waste, human waste is a big source of ammonia pollution. The human excreta can add to ammonia pollution. By the way, gai ke gober mein bhi ammonia pollution hoga. ऐसा नहीं है कि वो पवित्र है उसे लगा लो बॉडी पे खा लो उसको ध्यान रखना ओके इन टूडेज क्लास ओनली और आई थिंक वी विल स्टडी समवेयर दैट आई थिंक इट्स इन टूडेज क्लास और समवेयर आई आई हैड नोटेड इट डाउन आई हैड वेंट थ्रू सम रिसर्च पेपर्स ऑन गाय का गोबर एंड इट कंटेन्स ऑल दो सेम बैक्टीरियाज which is there in your excreta. So, those coliform which, uh, those bacteria which uh, because of your excreta pollute other water bodies. Those are also found in cow's dung. Okay, and don't go by this argument that uh, the deshi, uh, the Indian cow's dung is amazingly good for health and uh, it's uh, the research is done on the uh, UK cow or the US cow. Please understand, ye usi ka argument ho jayega that okay, our shit is tasty and white people shit is bad. Don't get into this, this kind of thing. Uh, those bacteria are there in the cow dung also. So, those people who were uh, putting, what do you call, gober all over their body at the time of corona, ki corona nahi hoga se, those were all idiots. Now, see, uh, I remember in my childhood, my mom would also take up gober and wo ghar ke bahar le leapte the gober ko. Like, I do not know whether uh, 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 some of you are from rural area or not, but in rural areas, this is still done. My nani used to do this. Uh, ghar ke piche thoda sa area hota hai, wahan pe, uh, they put that thing. But that's harmful, that's dangerous. We did it because we were not educated enough, we had not seen these research papers which are showing that they are harmful. Okay, it's because our parents were doing it, our grandparents were doing it, it does not mean that we will keep doing it. Okay, so chale. Uh, nitrogen feed to animal, if we reduce nitrogen feed to animal, then the ammonia would eventually be coming from nitrogen products. So, overall ammonia production would also reduce from animal husband. Fine, I hope ammonia pollution, this part of ammonia pollution is understood. Okay, then there, 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 there is this report about, in, uh, now we are, we are coming to indoor pollution. So, in indoor pollution, the first thing that we want to talk about is this Lancet Planetary Health Report. According to this Lancet Planetary Health Report in India, the outdoor pollution death have increased by 115% in last two decades, but death due to household pollution have come down by indoor pollution. Indoor pollution ki se death in India has reduced. It means they are saying that indoor pollution in India may be going Okay, so what is indoor pollution? Air pollution to sources inside your home. That is indoor pollution. 
the, the, look at the situation within the home if you have a chulha you are cooking you are uh, burning uh, some traditional fuel there cow dung cake or wood a lot of smoke is produced that smoke is pollution and when it is confined within the household like if you go to rural areas you will see that aap kitchen mein ghusoge aapko smell aa rahi hogi that smell uh, or the smoke wali feeling aa rahi hogi that smoke is actually harmful for you that smoke is actually dangerous for you that is one source of most important source of indoor pollution the use of traditional biomass for cooking is one of the sources for indoor pollution uh, they produce things like particulate matter methane carbon monoxide polyaromatic carbons polyaromatic hydro, hydrocarbon volatile organic carbons all these things become problematic and if ven ventilation is less now with homes becoming air conditioned and all ventilation is lesser and lesser so it also leads to more problem then health impact there's a specific thing uh, situ situation called thick building syndrome thick building syndrome is a term which is used for people who are living in this kind of building jahan pe indoor pollution level is high so they uh, would suffer from things like irritation of nose eyes throat skin elements allergies and all these kind of things okay so sort a number of initiatives have been taken to deal with indoor pollution recently for example raise initiative raise initiative we have started it was an initiative humne bhi air pollution wale section mein padha hai where air conditioners were modified in such a manner that uh, filter like first of all after covid 19 situation uh, the building should be safer and then efficiency should also go up so we have st already studied about it then unnat chulha abhiyan ministry of new and renewable energy ka ek initiative hai uh, which is focused on developing chulhas and providing those kind of chulhas which are using wood or other fuels with higher efficiency so that less smoke less waste would be produced then pradhan mantri ujjwala yojana that uh, lpg cylinder wala yojana where lpg connection was being given free of cost to bpl family please note that lpg connections are being given free of cost but the lpg cylinder filling monthly cylinder filling ke liye unko normal charges hi dene pad rahe hain and because of this though a lot of people have taken this connection people in rural areas are still using the traditional fuel because we know that lpg prices have gone up like anything in recent years okay then so this was indoor pollution we are not getting into a lot of details but thoda bahut samajh lo ki indoor pollution is also a concern now let's come to how agriculture subsidy is leading to air pollution so now uh, there are a few types of agriculture subsidy for example there is msp which is given to farmers for uh, msp is also kind of subsidy because it ensures that farmers are able to get more money than what they would have got from the market or subsidy that they get get from uh, get in for fertilizers urea subsidy scheme is there nutrient based subsidy scheme is there that's also a form of subsidy that farmers get then farmers also get subsidy for electricity so that they can use they could use elect uh, the submersibles and all those motors to irrigate the uh, land so there are different forms of subsidy given to farmers and all these subsidies are directly or indirectly adding to air pollution how let us understand first think of msp high msp for rice because of msp available being available for rice what farmers in haryana punjab are doing they have moved from their traditional crops to rice rice is not something that was uh, suitable for that region but because of high msp being available and then irrigation facilities being available they move to rice so other than the fact that rice crop itself can be a methane producer rice crop has also led to stubble burning it is the rice crop stubble which burns in october november december and causes air pollution so you can understand how msp is causing air pollution then think of power subsidy because of power subsidy farmers are using unnecessary amount of water a lot of water a lot of extra water so this is leading to again farmers moving to 
uh, water intensive crop moving to paddy that is leading to extra pollution plus this electricity is coming from some source mostly fossil fuel which is leading to pollution then fertilizer subsidy so fertilizer subsidy lot of urea being used we have already seen that indo gangetic plain has become one of the hot spots for ammonia pollution that's an example of how overuse of fertilizer is leading to this problem then for producing fertilizer energy is used fossil fuel is used that is leading to pollution so all these subsidies are adding to pollution while while covering air pollution topic we had not covered this that's why i want i thought ki covering it here would make more sense then there are some updates in biodiversity also some uh, biodiversity related updates are there let us look at this first is periodical cicadas periodical cicadas what are these cicadas cicadas are insects this kind of insect we can see that they have a kind of transparent wings this red reddish eyes and all so what are cicadas and why are they called periodical cicadas so first they are an insect of cicada family they were in news recently because billions of cicadas came out of ground in usa this happens once in 17 years or 13 years so it was in news for that purpose now let's understand these are insects who which have black bodies clear wings and bold red eyes america is the only country in the world where periodical cicadas stay underground for many years so we'll we'll understand this first of all understand what are these cicadas okay now why are they called periodical cicadas they're called periodical cicadas because these cicadas spend most of their life of their life of 17 years they spend almost the whole of that 17 years underground they burrow inside the ground and they stay there so some cicadas uh, cicadas uh, uh, live inside the ground for 13 years another live inside the ground for 17 years they feed on the root xylem of the plant uh, of the trees so they survive on that they spend five of the development stages called instars entirely underground generally after 17 years the the fifth instar nymph that is when five stages are completed of the development in 17 years they become adult for the first 17 years they are not adult like human beings become adult in 18 they become adult in 17 years then they come out of the ground they romance reproduce and retire within a month so their childhood from birth to adulthood was 17 years rest of their life life is one month they'll become adult they'll come out they'll romance the males male cicadas will make noise females will get attracted to them they'll mate reproduce and then they'll retire and die this happens every 17 years or jin ke liye 13 years ka cycle hai every 13 years now please note it's something like a west ki yahan pe kya ho raha hai na wo this movie this anand anand movie mein rajesh khanna says uh, babu moshai zindagi badi honi chahiye lambi nahi ye bhi zyada lambi zindagi nahi jee rahe wo enjoy karke jee rahe hain now come to interesting part the cicadas which came out now were called brood eggs brood x so what is meant by brood brood generally refers to periodical cicadas which emerge the same year so please note one thing that humne ek nilgiri flowers ke bare mein padha tha which flower once in 12 years this is not the case with cicadas please note cicadas become adult in 17 years but every year like in 2020 some cicadas have become adult in 2021 also some would become adult so they will come out in 2022 some would become adult so they would come out the ones which are born today 
जिनके पेरेंट्स अभी मरे होंगे दे वुड बिकम अडल्ट इन नेक्स्ट सेवनटीन ईयर्स एंड दे वुड कम आउट इन टू थाउजेंड थर्टी सेवन और थर्टी एट जब भी सेवनटीन ईयर्स पूरे होंगे थर्टी एट सो ईच ऑफ दीज आर कॉल्ड ब्रूट्स तो वॉट आर ब्रूट्स ब्रूट्स आर सिकाडास विच कम आउट टूगेदर इन द सेम ईयर दिल बिकम एडल्ट इन द सेम ईयर बेसिकली इट्स समथिंग लाइक एक साल इस उसी साल में जो सारे सिकाडास पैदा हुए होंगे दे आर ब्रूट्स नाउ प्लीज नोट दैट देव मैक्सिम सेवनटीन डिफरेंट ब्रूट्स ब्रूड वन ब्रूड टू ब्रूड थ्री ब्रूड फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन टू सेवनटीन देव सेवनटीन डिफरेंट ब्रूड्स इनके जो वेन दे वुड कम आउट देर बच्चे वुड कम आउट इन द नेक्स्ट एटीन ईयर विच कैन बी कॉल्ड अगेन ब्रूड वन right did you understand the meaning of brood so now one more thing some cicadas become adult in 17 years some other become adults in 13 years so the 17 years wale hai na they have been numbered as brood 1 brood 2 brood 3 to brood 17 and jo 13 years wale hai they have been numbered after 17 brood 18 brood 19 brood 20 to brood ओके तो देयर नंबरिंग विथ समथिंग लाइक 18, 19, 20 टू 30. सो व्हेन दे आफ्टर 18 इयर्स देयर चिल्ड्रन वुड कम आउट इन द नेक्स्ट ब्रूड दे अगेन बी कॉल्ड 18, 19, 20 टिल 30. वेर इज दीज वन वन टू सेवनटीन वन दे वुड बी कॉल्ड आफ्टर सेवनटीन वन टू थ्री फोर तो इन दिस वे ब्रूड्स हैव बिन numbered fine so this year it was in news because brood x to so brood x kaun se honge jo 17 years wale unme se brood 1 to 17 or 17 years wale wo hote to so brood x had come out now brood x is one of the largest and most broadly distributed group of periodical cicadas so when they came out it became attractive attractive means they attracted so billions of brood billions of the cicadas coming out of the ground creating so much noise it became something that came in news okay they came out they would not be there for the whole year in 4 months they'll romance reproduce and retire in not four months in sorry in one month in four weeks they'll romance reproduce and retire now where would they lay eggs they would lay eggs on the trees in sometimes hatchlings will come out they'll fall on the ground and they'll burrow inside most of the hatchlings die very few of them go and survive inside now inside they'll stay there for 17 years or so and another the, of this brood x now please understand because there are so many in numbers the children will also be so many in numbers so 17 years later again brood x would come out making a lot of noise you would be in service then news aayega to class ko thoda yaad rakhna ki hame santosh sir padhate the us time bhi youtube pe dekh lena class is saal sir fir se padha rahe honge brood x ke bare mein to sikadas Do we have cicadas in India? Yes. Note, please note that every cicada doesn't follow this feature. This feature. So we have periodical cicadas in India. There are three species of periodical cicadas in the Indian subcontinent. Not all of them are in India. Two of them are in India. One is in the Indian subcontinent. So Cremistica mixta, it's found in Sri Lanka. C. seminger, it's found in Nilgiri Hills, and C. ribhoi, it's found in ribhoi district of Meghalaya. It is Uh, the mass emergence from the ground of cicadas not please note mass emergence will not take place for all cicadas har cicada alag alag time pe bahar aa sakta hai na to mass emergence for cicadas is only seen in case of c ribhoi or cremistica ribhoi which is 
seen in Meghalaya. So they they'll generally uh, come out at dusk once in four years. This particular species, C. ribhoi, in Meghale, they'll come out once in four years. This is known phenomena among the villagers here who uh, consider, who call this uh, insects as Niangstser. Now, these cicadas, they use it as food. They also use it as fish bait. It was observed in May 2006. It was observed in May 2010. It was observed in May 2014 and so on. Those periodical cicadas are found in India also. One of them takes four years. So, periodicals, well, the America ones are uh, becoming news and these do not become news because the America ones are, American ones are very large in numbers. Because they are so large in number when they come out, it's clearly visible. So, they were in news, cicadas. Okay. Then, dragon fruit. What is dragon fruit? This fruit is called dragon fruit. It was in news last year in June, to, June July 2020 when in Monkey Bath, uh, Prime Minister Modi had uh, congratulated uh, the farmers from Kaksh to become, uh, who had started growing this and have made India self-reliant. Recently, it was in news because uh, it, this uh, fruit, dragon fruit, uh, which is also called Kamalam, has, has, uh, we have started exporting that, this to Dubai. So this fruit has the scientific name as Hylocereus sun, sundatus. It's grown in many countries like Malaysia, Thailand, Philippines, USA and Vietnam. India, mein, it is an exotic fruit. It is something that was not native to India. It has been brought to India. Uh, it's very rich in fiber, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, requires less water and it can be grown in different kinds of soils. Uh, various different kinds of soil. There are three main varieties that we have in India. One is white flesh with pink skin. Uh, other is red flesh with pink skin. Then white flesh with yellow skin. These are the like skin and the flesh inside. Uske basis pe, uh, these namings have been done. Last year in June, to th Abhi it was in news because it was getting exported to Dubai. Uh, it was in, in news in PIB. Last year it was in news when PM in Monkey Bath had mentioned about dragon fruit farming in the arid Kutch region of Gujarat. Okay, so dragon fruit and exotic fruit recently exported to Dubai is something that we have seen. So this was something related to biodiversity which we had not covered in the previous classes. We have done it now. Now please note some things related to biodiversity or something related to air pollution may still uh, be there which we may not have covered. We would do it. Okay, we would do it. As he updates ke form, we will keep doing it. Now, let us start today's new booklet. Uh, booklet 54 or Environment Biodiversity ka booklet 17. Let us cover this section. We are continuing with water issues. The previous booklet was also on wa water issues, but we had taken, we had looked, we had looked at some updates on uh, air pollution and biodiversity. Now we are again jumping onto the water issues, and the first uh, issue that we are covering is the issue of thermal pollution. So we 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 have been dealing with various water pollution issues. One uh, other issue which affects water is thermal pollution. So what is thermal pollution? Look, at very basic level, change in water temperature is can also be considered a pollutant. Now, what is a, like what is a pollutant? Pollutant is anything which deteriorates the quality, which impacts uh, the health, which impacts the biodiversity, which impacts the living organisms. Right now. If the temperature of the water increases, the temperature of the water may change slightly. You must be knowing that ocean temperature do not change a lot. Because even if it's getting sunlight, the heat gets distributed throughout the water body. So the temperature variation is not that much. Okay. But there are some human activities which lead to 
टेम्परेचर इंक्रीज और टेम्परेचर डिक्रीज विच मे कॉज थर्मल पोल्यूशन तो वॉट आर दोज एक्टिविटीज लेट्स लुक एट दैट थर्मल पावर प्लांट से विन द कूलेंट रीच इज देयर वी वी नो वॉट द कूलेंट्स आर कूलेंट्स आर समथिंग विच ट्रांसफर हीट फ्रॉम द पावर प्लांट टू द टर्बाइन सो वेन दिस कूलेंट वॉटर इज रिलीज इन टू द ocean or release into the river in a small area it drastically changes the temperature it increases the temperature similarly industry effluents may be released which may be impacting the temperature though for a shorter period though in a smaller region but they may be capable of doing it then a uh, vegetation cover if if around a, a water body if you remove remove the vegetation cover let's say this is a lake and there was a lot of vegetation around it but because of various human activities we have slow we slowly removed this vegetation so more heating up of the land would take place and thus more chances of temperature variation uh, temperature increasing of the water body uh, temperature of the water body increasing would be there right so these are the different ways in which temperature variation takes place thermal pollution may take place now what are the impacts of thermal pollution first is the oxygen deficiency in general gases solubility any gas solubility in water will reduce with increase in temperature when water starts boiling you will see gas would go out you, you also note this like cold drink at very cold temperatures at colder temperature they'll be able to keep oxygen more and more oh, sorry co2 in it but as it warms up co2 would be released so in the same way oxygen which is dissolved in water would be released because of increased temperature not only this there's another factor high metabolism think of this jab garmi hoti hai do you uh, sweat a lot do you burn more energy yes you consume more oxygen yes same would happen with the living organisms which are in the water when temperature go up they will metabolize more they will consume more energy so uh, uh, less oxygen is available but more oxygen is being demanded by living organisms what would it lead to oxygen deficiency are you able to understand this why oxygen deficiency would take place then temperatures uh, note one more thing we human beings especially the ones who are living in delhi we are adapted to extreme weather conditions we 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 have learned to our body has learned to survive in 4 degree celsius in winters and 45 degree celsius in summers right because we are used to it our human beings have seen this variation they have adapted to with this situation but most of the living organisms in water bodies in water bodies temperature do not vary a lot आप ऐसा नहीं होगा कि इफ इट्स वेरी हॉट आउटसाइड एंड यू जंप इन टू अक और यूल जंप इन टू अवर और यूल जंप इन टू अशन यूल सी दैट वहां पे भी पानी इज बॉइलिंग नो द वॉटर देयर वुड बी कूलर राइट दिस इज दिनारियो तो द लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम विच आर लिविंग इन दैट वॉटर दे आर नॉट अडेप्टेड टू चेंजेस इन टेम्परेचर दे आर वेरी सेंसिटिव टू टेम्परेचर चेंज बिकॉज दे आर वेरी सेंसिटिव टू टेम्परेचर चेंज वेन we add heat into the water when artificially temperature rises what would happen temperature sensitive living organisms or aquatic organisms would die then it also decreases decomposition of organic matter why or oxygen deficiency is there so those microorganisms which used oxygen for decomposition purposes they would not be able to function effectively then a primary productivity and diversity of aquatic plant species decline you can also understand this why primary productivity with rise in temperature primary productivity would go down okay this is thermal pollution ek thermal pollution se related koi conceptual question aayega exam mein aaye na aaye math karaunga in the uh, questions that we are going to do this week we would be solving when, when will we solving those questions i'll try to test you on whether you have understood the idea or not now please note the thermal pollution is not only like addition of heat it could be drastic temperature reduction also which may become a problem 
नाउ यू वुड से हाउ वुड ड्रास्टिक टेम्परेचर रिडक्शन अगर लेट से कहीं पे पानी स्टोर करके रखा हुआ है डैम में इन द हिमालय एंड दैट वाटर इज रिलीज तो लॉट ऑफ वाटर विल इवेंचुअली रीच ओशन विच इज कोल्डर और विल रीच रिवर विच इज कोल्डर दिस वाटर विल रिड्यूस द टेम्परेचर ड्रास्टिकली एंड इट मे ऑल्सो बी नेगेटिवली इम्पैक्टिंग लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम विच आर वेरी सेंसिटिव टू टेम्परेचर चेंज दस द इश्यू ऑफ थर्मल पोल्यूशन आई होप यू हैव अंडरस्टूड थर्मल पोल्यूशन प्रॉपरली नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट मर्करी पोल्यूशन नाउ मर्करी पोल्यूशन इट इज एन एयर पोल्यूटेंट इट्स ए वॉटर पोल्यूटेंट इट्स ए सॉइल पोल्यूटेंट हम इसे वाटर पोल्यूशन में देख रहे हैं बट प्लीज नोट मर्करी वेपर्स वेन यू ब्रीद इन मर्करी वेपर्स इट इज इट्स इट्स एयर पोल्यूशन मोस्ट ऑफ द मर्करी दैट इज प्रोड्यूस इज प्रोड्यूस बाय बर्निंग ऑफ कोल बर्निंग ऑफ कोल वेपर्स आर रिलीज स्मोक इज रिलीज इट ऑल्सो कंटेन्स मर्करी तो वॉट इज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट इज मर्करी मर्करी अकर मर्करी इज अवी मेटल एच जी इट इज दी If, if if you remember your class nine or class ten labs, there mercury would be contained a, met, a liquid metal which will be contained in a, a small box. And for the first time when you held it, you were surprised to see the weight. You were expecting that that small box will contain how much weight? But it was pretty heavy because mercury is one of the heaviest metals. it is liquid at room temperature now mercury is naturally available in earth's crust and other than it being naturally available it is also produced because of human activities for example it's available in earth's crust so when we'll do mining activities it would be released mercury is also used in certain types of mining we'll talk about that too then burning of coal burning of fossil fuel especially is the biggest source of mercury pollution for now okay so this fossil fuel burning se mercury which is released it would remain in air for some time but eventually it will settle into the water or onto the land the one which is settling onto the land it will also eventually washed off into the water now certain microorganisms can convert this mercury into what is known as methyl mercury and it is this methyl mercury which is highly toxic which is a cause of concern for us now who what does who says how much of mercury is okay who says that in drinking water 0.001 mg per liter of mercury is okay think of 1 g per liter is itself is a very small quantity 1 mg is further smaller 0.0001 mg per liter is something that is acceptable in water the water we you are drinking perhaps it has much more mercury than this because india mein mercury pollution bahut hai who standard says the 0.001 mg industrial waste mein up to 0.01 mg is allowed industrial waste the waste which eventually gets joins water bodies even they are not allowed ki bahut sara mercury would be released to treat it properly first to ensure that mercury is not beyond 0.01 mg per liter now which are the sources of mercury pollution so first it is an element in earth's crust so earth's crust itself may be producing it second there are natural sources like volcanic eruptions emissions from the ocean and so on but it is the anthropogenic sources which are a cause of concern first the biggest source is coal burning then in mining activities gold mining activities mein uh, mercury is used to separate gold from its ore then burning hazardous waste aise socho hospital waste you see sometimes hospital waste is getting burned usme thermometers bhi hote hain thermometers you have mercury that may be a problem or other hazardous waste from industries which may be having mercury this mercury this mercury will get vaporized will get into the air will get into the water will eventually settle into the ground onto the ground and get washed off into the water then chlorine production mein mercury is used Bra uh, mercury products breaking and spilling so thermometer is one example which if you break 
mercury would be released. Then improper treatment or disposal of mercury. Uh, for example, uh, some industries, there was, there was a, this industry, Hindustan liver, which had improperly disposed of mercury, which led to Kodai kernel mercury poisoning. So, industry se bhi improper disposal may cause issues. Okay, so I hope you are able to understand various sources of mercury pollution. So, it is naturally available in the earth's crust. It is naturally there in ocean. Earth's crust may be toh bhi hoga. But the most important source of pollution is coal and then there are these industrial or accidental sources. Humans, how do we get exposed to mercury? The biggest, biggest source of mercury exposure is fish. Kismati kharaab hai. Meethe khane pe ko diabetes hoega, fish khane pe aapko mercury pollution ho sakta hai. So, most human exposure to mercury is from eating fish. Now, please note, please note something that most of the mercury pollution is coming from coal burning. That mercury gets into the air, eventually falls, eventually gets into the water body where fish, it gets into the food chain and get accumulated in fish. It gets bioaccumulated in fish and when we eat that fish, this is the biggest source of mercury pollution. Then breathing mercury vapor when accidental uh, breakage of mercury equipments happen. That is another major way by which we get infected. Okay, now harmful effect kya honge mercury ke? It is harmful in all forms whether organic ho, inorganic ho, elemental ho. Methyl mercury one, it is a neurotoxin. Neurotoxin to it will create issues. Mercury is specifically very harmful in the early stages of development. So, a pregnant woman or a newborn child will get impacted by mercury more. Not only women child, we are special. Nahi hai. All mammals, fish, birds, you would see that birds lay fewer eggs and face trouble in caring for the chicks when mercury pollution is high. Same, fish find it, the spawning success is decrease in fish. Mammals ka impaired motor skill ho jata hai because of mercury, then it can also affect immune system. Okay, till a few years back, it was believed that people who are not consuming seafood, fish or shellfish, they are safe from mercury. So I used to say, as khush to bahut honge vegetarian log, they'll not get mercury pollution. But recent studies have shown. It, in USA, it was found that this bird, Bicknell's thrushes, it lives on land and very high into the mountains. It has no interaction with fish in the ocean. It doesn't consume fish from the ocean. It was affected by mercury pollution. More studies found that there were coal-based thermal power plants nearby. Mercury ko saath lata hai and vegetarian logon ko bhi pollute kar jata hai. To mercury pollution can impact even the non-fish eaters. Please note this. Now, this is the airborne mercury. What is the situation in India? Mercury pollution situation in India. Mercury contamination is at very high level in India. Industrial effluents in India have been seen to release mercury from 0 0.058 to 0 0.268 milligram per liter. Industrial effluent is a big concern. Ban hai. Center for, to, other than thermal power plants, it is industrial effluent which are cause of concern. According to Center for Science and Environment, high levels of mercury are found in fish stocks mostly from coastal areas of Mumbai, Kolkata, Karawar, etc. Then North Coel River, where the fish is known to have very high concentration of mercury. Coel River showed mercury concentration almost 600 to 700 times and thus fish from North Coel River is also having this issue. Then other than fish, mercury in water 
ground water as well as surface water have been found throughout the country. Not a single part of the country was safe from it. Then industrial units such as chloralkali units, cement unit, chemical units, etc. They were also shown to have higher than permissible limits of mercury. So, India mein toh like generally environmental regulations are much weaker and thus this kind of pollution is very high. Now, note that mercury pollution because of air and all, because of uh, fish ka exports and all will spread throughout the world. So, it is not like only in only one country mercury pollution is there and uh, by because of mercury pollution only one country would be affected. So, there was a need of, what was the need? There was a need of international cooperation in fight, fighting mercury pollution and in 2019, uh, sorry, in 2013, Mina Mata Convention, Mina Mata Convention on Mercury was uh, ratified by 140 countries. Mina Mata Convention is a treaty which is aimed at protecting human health and environment from the anthropogenic emission of mercury. What are, what are the key things which this Minamata convention would provide for? Again, khud se sochna. Minamata convention is for fighting mercury pollution. So, what are the things it would ask countries to do? It would say, do not make, go for more mercury being emitted. How? Prohibit mercury mines. Existing mines should be also be stopped in some time. Come up with alternate products. The technology at the thermal power plants have to be improved. These are the things that the convention should be saying, right? So, we have written a lot of things here. Please understand, use your common sense. Do not try to cram all these things. Common sense use karo ke haan, ye bolna hi tha. What are the things that the convention is saying? Ban on mercury mines. New mercury mines not create any new mercury mine, phase out existing mines. Mines which already are there, phase it out. Control measures on air emission from power plants. Thermal power plants are biggest source of mercury pollution. Pe emission control karna hai. Regulate informal sectors like small scale gold mining. We had seen that gold mining mein mercury is used. So, that has to be regulated. Phase out or reduce mercury use in products like batteries, switches, etc. We know mercury batteries and all those things, we have to phase it out. Phase out or reduce mercury use in manufacturing processes. Then the convention also addresses supply and trade, safer storage and disposal and strategies to address contaminated sites. It uh, provides for technical assistance. The countries which sign this treaty, which ratify this treaty, they will be able to get support from developed countries. Technical assistance from the developed countries, uh, information exchange from developed countries, uh, they also provides for public awareness, research and monitoring. Convention also requires party to report um, on measures taken to implement certain provisions. So again, broadly you understand Minamata Convention mein kya hona tha. Just by reading these points, you will be able to uh, understand the specific aspects. Is India, did India sign the Minamata Convention? Yes, India signed the Minamata Convention, but it was not ratified by our uh, cabinet. Uh, India's cabinet ratified Minamata Convention in 2018. So now, when India has ratified this convention, it would be easy for India. It would be easy for India to get technology, to get information, to get assistance from other countries who are part of this convention. Okay, so Minamata Convention is for fighting mercury pollution. Here, analysis nahi karenge, how effective it has been and all those things. Here, just know that Minamata Convention is one of the conventions. Now, let's talk about another news that was in May 2021. It was about Greenland, where polluting industries are not there, where uh, thermal power plants are not there. In the water there, water which is mostly coming from melting of the ice, melting of the glacier, the mercury pollution was very high, as high as the water in the rivers of China where 
mercury pollution is very high because of a lot of industrial waste going in. It was in, in news in May 2021 in down to earth. So what is it saying? The mercury content in the rivers and fjords of southwestern Greenland was similar to that of found in polluted inland rivers of China. You know Greenland? Ek island hai. Hai na? Uh, Europe ke upar jaake, Europe ke bhi north mein, east mein jaake. Uh, th there's this island. Okay. Here in the rivers and fjords, the mercury level was similar to the mercury level which was found in polluted rivers in China. Why is it so? It is so because glaciers, when they are uh, moving, when glaciers are moving, wo landforms ko bahut effect karte hai. So if landforms, earth's crust naturally has mercury. So if landform has mercury and glacier is opening up that landform, more mercury is there. So naturally, more mercury is here. Slow movement of glaciers down the slope of hills and the ground particles are carried into the streams as the glaciers melt. So those ground particles may be having mercury in them. Now, when this river, these rivers have mercury, these fjords have mercury, so coastal food web will get mercury. Yahan se Arctic region mein mercury would go. In fact, uh, Greenland is a major food exporter, so mercury becomes a concern. So what is the finding, what is the significance of this finding? Significance is this, that do not only think of anthropogenic sources of mercury pollution. There can be natural sources of mercury pollution too which can be very high, which can be a cause of concern and we have to keep worrying about it. We have to keep looking at it. Okay, now let's talk about fjords. We said rivers and fjords from Greenland are having a lot of mercury pollution. What are fjords? So fjords are this kind of landscapes which are created by glaciers moving. When glaciers move, they do eroding activities and they create this fine kind of landforms which get inside inland inland mein wo jada deeper honge because the glaciers are heavier inland so their impact would be heavier there as they come out they may be less deeper so this kind of landforms are called fjords so yahan pe fjord is a long deep narrow body of water that reaches for far inland you will see the, because glaciers are coming from inland it the these would be reaching far inland. Okay, these are fjords. Now, they are often set in a U-shaped valley with steep walls of rocks on either side. Fjords are created by glaciers. Glaciation carves deep valleys. They are usually deepest further inland. Uh, fjords are generally found in Norway, China, Norway, Chile, New Zealand, Canada, Greenland, US state of Alaska. So, here is Greenland. Hai. Greenland, here is China, hai. Chile is not China, hai. China, Norway, China, New Zealand, Canada, Greenland and US state of Alaska. So, here in Greenland there are fjords, hai. here the fjords have high concentration of mercury because of this it was in news. Okay, so mercury pollution, we have tried to cover as many dimensions as possible. All the news related to mercury. See, mercury related things down to earth may discuss ho rahi. But generally, the current affairs magazines have not covered mercury pollution this year. Why? I don't know. Mercury pollution, anyways, you have to study. Okay, now let's go to marine pollution in general. Marine pollution actually is not something that we should cover because we have already talked about uh, different ways in which marine pollution is happening. For example, uh, overfishing. Food and Agriculture Organization says that uh, uh, human beings are going for a lot of fishing and they are exploit, exploiting over, uh, exploiting the fish. Uh, plastic waste in ocean, we will study plastic waste in ocean in more detail when we are de dealing with plastic pollution. But understand, eventually all the plastic that we are using, they are non-biodegradable. Most of it is getting into the ocean. They are non-biodegradable but because of weathering activities and all, they break into smaller pieces. They become invisible. They are called microplastic. So small, very small pieces of plastic would be floating into the ocean. Those are called microplastic. Now they get into the food chain. Fish consume them. 
in the fish body you'll find it so this is plastic pollution 60 to 80 percent uh, of the marine litter today is plastic and most of it 80 percent of it is coming from land this plastic pollution is another form of marine pollution which is a cause of concern then industrial discharge industrial waste which is getting into the marine ecosystem agricultural runoff we have talked about how agricultural runoff how fertilizers and all gets washed off river pollution rivers eventually join what ocean so if river mein ammonia jada hai ocean mein ammonia jada hoga if river mein pollution jada hai ocean mein oil spills and leaks oil accidents that take place that generally uh, tankers are generally in the ocean the marine pollution takes place shipping industry shipping industry have chemicals shipping industry would have its own sewage when people are living there and all of it get disposed of in the water persistent organic pollutants they get into the water from industries sediment flow tourist waste global warming global warming is leading to what T temperature increase global warming is leading to uh, more co2 so co2 jada hone ki se, carbonic acid jada rahega ocean mein. acidification is taking place all these are different forms of marine pollution we uh, study all these different form of pollution separately to hum yahan pe detail mein nahi ja rahe hai. impact kya hota hai impact one impact is coral bleaching because of pollution coral bleaching takes place so this we will study in more detail in today's booklet in this booklet only the last topic is about corals so we will study there ocean acidification i have explained you acidification may take place because of pollutants like sulfur uh, things sulfur dioxide rain, uh, acid rain and all but acidification would also take place because of more co2 being in atmosphere so more carbonic acid would be produced so it has uh, various studies have shown that pH level of ocean water has dropped by 0.1. pH level has dropped by 0.1. It represents around 30% rise in acidity. And it is expected that this will further deteriorate in coming time. Oxygen depletion, we have talked about how algae and all can eventually lead to oxygen depletion, which will lead to difficulty for marine organisms to survive. Microplastic. More or less we understand it, but we'll cover it in my, uh, plastic pollution in more detail. Oil spills, red tides, all these kind of things we have already done. So what should be done? What should be done to deal with marine pollution? Regulation, chemical industry and all, they, are, they should not be allowed to release their waste into the rivers or into eventually, which will eventually get into the ocean. Stricter fishing regulation, over exploitation, will not be sustainable will impact our food security in future restrictions on killing of wildlife like uh, dolphins turtles etc but more importantly establishing more marine protected areas we we studied this also we had said that the target was to ensure that 10 percent of the open oceans become marine protected area by 2020 but this number has remained between 6 to 7 per 6.7 percent or so uh, is marine protected areas then dealing with other forms of pollution please note air pollution water pollution river pollution all these kind of pollutions are eventually impacting the ocean so if you have to deal with marine pollution you will have to fight all other different kinds of pollution okay now ocean deoxygenation ye bhi more or less we have covered the same theory eutrophication more nutrients more sunlight will lead to eutrophication eutrophication will lead to sun rays not entering inside and thus photosynthesis not taking place oxygen not being produced oxygen not being produced but oxygen is being consumed by living organisms eventually oxygen will deplete deoxygenation would take place according to a report by iucn oxygen deoxygenation everyone's problem ocean region with low oxygen concentration is increasing in area more and more ocean region is now without oxygen or with lesser and lesser oxygen then volume of area depleted with oxygen or uh, overall area depleted with oxygen that is which does not have oxygen in which life can survive has quadrupled has become four times now what 
if the present rate of deoxygenation continues then oceans are expected to lose 3 to 4% of its oxygen by 2100 local changes may be more severe locally ocean may 3 to 4% average but locally there would be place which will lose 100% of its oxygen which would not be left with any oxygen at all most of the oxygen loss will take place in the upper region of the ocean top 1000 meters of the ocean it is this top 1000 meters which is able to get sunlight and thus most of the life is here so when most of the oxygen would be lost from here life would be difficult here so why what are the reasons for deoxygenation one is climate change other is nutrient pollution why nutrient pollution will lead to more nutrients being there algae being there more heat will facilitate that will help in growing that and climate change you say temperature increases Tem with higher temperature less oxygen would be dissolved in the water then acidification or ocean warming are also playing a role in this deoxygenation how does it impact how does deoxygenation impact life balance of marine life get affected those species which are tolerant to less oxygen will be able to flourish species which are not tolerant to less oxygen level will become extinct so marine biodiversity balance gets negatively affected then uh, biodiversity gets affected that's a problem but in general nitrogen and phosphorus cycle in the ocean also somehow directly or indirectly depends on oxygen dissolved uh, available there they would also be impacted and this nitrogen and phosphorus may also get impacted so what should we do we should tackle climate change we should manage nutrients climate change tackle chemically so that more and more heating doesn't take place and nutrient management unnecessary amount of nutrients should not be getting into the ocean be it from industries be it from our agricultural land or be it from our households yesterday we were talking about detergent pollution phosphorus was getting into the water phosphorus was leading to eutrophication so even from how our households a lot of waste is getting into the ocean which is becoming a cause of concern okay now Saragaso seaweed. What is this issue? Yeah, maybe July 2021 news So let's first understand uh, what. Uh, first, let's understand what is this Saragaso sea. The next topic. Saragaso sea is a sea which is lying in this North Atlantic Ocean, North East Atlantic Ocean. Now you would see that other sea, Black Sea, Caspian Sea, they are surrounded by land boundaries arabian sea arabian sea may be land boundary hai na caspian sea may land boundary hai the saragasso sea has land boundary oh, sorry saragasso sea nahin. black sea has land boundary but this is the only sea in the world which does not have land boundary what are its boundaries ocean currents this current this current this current and this current these ocean currents are the boundary of the Sargasso Sea. So, you, what is the ocean current which is flowing on this side? Which is the ocean current here? You would see that uh, this is North Atlantic drift, I guess. Uh, this is the Canary cold current. Wala. This is equatorial. And this one is that uh, Gulf, uh, Gulf, nee, nee, Gulf Stream. Hai bolte hai. Ha, Gulf Stream. Bolte hai. Ha, Gulf Stream, the Gulf Stream, this is Gulf Stream, this is North Atlantic Drift, this section, then Canary Current, this is Canary Current, which flows like this, cold uh, voila, or then North Atlantic Equatorial Current, Equator, Equator pe jo current aara hai, so this is North Atlantic Equatorial Current, these are forming boundaries. Oh, yes, I'll just leave it Five minutes. Two. I said, two minutes. I'll leave it for two minutes. Uh, so, uh, Saragossa Sea is this sea, which is surrounded by these ocean currents. Now, over the years, what has happened is, 
will 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 to will come to saragossa sea but in this saragossa sea there's a weed called saragossa sea weed which was earlier distributed sporadically kahin kahin till 2010 it was not a problem but in 2011 we saw an explosion of this sea weed and since then every year we'll see that this is the distribution of sea weed 2011 2012 13 mein fir nahi aaya but 14 mein bahut sara 15 mein bhi kafi 16 17 but 18 mein too much and in 2021 similar situation that of 18 has come this saragossa sea weed is covering this area a lot of this sea weed is getting washed off to the coastal areas here to the beaches here to the tourist destination here in the saragossa sea region this is happening now why is this seaweed growing so much because it is getting a lot of nutrients it's getting a lot of nutrients so it's able to grow plus look at saragossa sea it is surrounded by ocean currents and now when it is surrounded by ocean currents beach mein wahan pe stability hai not a lot of movement so it's easy for the seaweed to grow third important aspect is the characteristic of seaweed other kinds of weeds they grow on the ocean floor but this seaweed uh, uh, other kind of seaweed first uh, unka fertilization and all would take place on the ocean floor but this would take place on the surface only so if you go and saragasso seaweed search karoge na you will see bahut sara green material coastal areas mein bharta ja raha hai so this saragasso seaweed was in news in 2021 also scientists at usf college of marine science have used nasa satellite imagery to track saragassum a brown seaweed for 20 years they are detecting record high amounts in the caribbean central west and gulf of mexico region the bloom is essentially the same size of the largest saragassum bloom ever recorded in the history in 2018 to usi size ka bhi 2021 ka bloom hai eventually when uh, 2021 gets over we'll understand how big this bloom was there okay so what are the reasons conducive sea surface temperature salinity combined together and then the stability of the saragossa sea combined together for the formation of this seaweed thing okay uh, dead zones chalo ab let's do rest of the things in the next class yahan pe abhi dusri class honi hai karan sir aake mujhe daat ke chale gaye hain to tomorrow uh, we'll do rest of the things here okay i'll see you tomorrow